October 4, 1957. History changed when the Soviet Union launched the first artificial satellite, Sputnik 1. Roughly the size of a basketball, Sputnik caught the attention of the world and marked the birth of the space age. Fifty years later, humans live in space. In their permanent home, the International Space Station, the largest and most complex spacecraft ever made. Old rivals and new international partners have worked in global cooperation on the station. Over 60 space flights have brought people, hardware, and supplies. For the shuttle mission STS-120, a new connecting module named Harmony will be added. It serves as a global gateway to future station laboratories and will help continue NASA's journey in space. station assembly will have their work cut out for them, conducting almost two missions in one. First, they must deliver the connecting module, Harmony, to the station. Roughly 24 feet in length, the module is prime real estate for the station, providing a place to connect science modules from the European Space Agency and Japan. In addition, the crew must relocate a 30,000 pound piece of hardware called the P6, a set of solar arrays that were temporarily placed on top of the station to provide power. Since then, NASA has built on the station's truss, a backbone to the outpost. The solar arrays can now be moved to their final location at the far port side of the truss, where they will be reactivated, once again gathering sunlight and providing power. Leading the mission is Commander Pam Melroy. Having served on two prior space station assembly missions, she has participated firsthand in what has been called the greatest engineering feat ever attempted. Well, I think that's been one of the most exciting parts of the mission for me the, on my two previous flights, was to back away from the space station and see the element that you'd installed, and you've seen the station grow before your very eyes and know that you were a part of it. It's also kind of a dramatic thing to realize that it's just a snapshot. While we're doing assembly, the space station visually looks different with every assembly mission. Joining Commander Melroy is first-time flyer George Zamka. He sees this mission as an ongoing learning process in space. I, I view the uh, space station as, as a, uh, a springboard to follow-on space exploration. Uh, while we're on uh, the space station, we're learning how to live in space, how to work in space. We're encountering problems as we encountered uh, earlier this summer. We're coming up with solutions and we're learning from it. And uh, that's what the space station is going to provide for us for a good long period of time. Spacewalks will be an important part of this mission. Veteran astronaut Scott Parazinski will be joined by newcomer Doug Wheelock outside the station for their assembly tasks doing my spacewalks with Scott Perizinski, who was just a tremendous man and, and uh, just a tri been a terrific mentor for me. And I, I don't know how I could learn it from anyone any, any better. You know, he's just, uh, he's just a wealth of knowledge for me. Mission specialist Stephanie Wilson brings her skill for working both the shuttle and the station robotic arms. Like giant space cranes at a construction site, the arms move the station parts to their proper place for installation. You know, they compare uh, similarly. They're both, of course, developed by Canada. Uh, the station robotic arm has the ability for either end to be a grapple fixture or to be a base. And so we can do this walk-off maneuver. And so it uh, does have gr a greater capability than the shuttle robotic arm, but the, both arms are, are, are fine to operate. Mission specialist Paolo Nespoli not only represents the European Space Agency, but also his native Italy, where the Harmony module was built. This would be, of course, the high point, one of the high points of my life. I'm also 
uh, very proud from a professional point of view. I'm grateful for these opportunities and I'm great of, grateful also because I can uh, go in space with a piece of, uh, of the Italian industry that represent the work and the commitment of a thousand of people that work for this and for that I'm very grateful. Joining the shuttle crew is astronaut Dan Tani, who will participate in the spacewalks and remain on board the station as a crew member. Together, the crew will face one of the busiest work schedules NASA has seen. When their mission is done, the station will have reached a major milestone in its construction. After our mission, the subsequent missions will finally bring up the uh, European Space Agency's laboratory and then the Japanese laboratory, uh, their contribution to, to the station. Naming the, the Node 2 Harmony uh, is, is actually um, very appropriate because it, it will bring us together finally as an international partnership um, in this cooperative effort. This station assembly mission, like those that came before, is the result of many people working behind the scenes to ensure mission success. Many hands have worked on the Harmony module prior to it reaching space, beginning with its initial construction in Turin, Italy, and continuing at the Kennedy Space Center in Florida, where it was further processed and readied for launch. The ride to the station, the space shuttle, must undergo thorough processing and testing before each flight. Making the flight as safe as it can be is a matter of pride among those who prepare the spacecraft for its journey. At the Johnson Space Center in Houston, other trainers and engineers work behind the scenes. Late in the planning process, an extra spacewalk was added. STA-54, a putty-like material, is to be tested in space by the astronauts. Analysts need more data on whether or not the substance can be used to repair a damaged tile in the shuttle's thermal protection system, which must withstand the extreme heat of re-entry. It's a team effort for trainers and astronauts to meet the last-minute addition. Uh, I know it's an enormous amount of work to prepare for an additional spacewalk, and in particular the uh, mission operations uh, folks that support our flight, Dina Catella and Allison Bollinger and, and others that uh, Work, the, the detailed timelines have been working incredibly long hours getting ready for this and um, you know 95 percent or more of every mission is accomplished uh, on the ground uh, before the flight by people other than the crew in fact, in fact it's probably 99 percent or more um, I consider myself almost a, a bit player in, in the grand scheme of this really challenging mission that we have before us beginning with the small satellite that changed the world and made competing nations invest time, energy, and talent towards space. And continuing with the cooperative efforts of today, which push innovation and creativity to make a permanent home in space. Exploration beyond our world demands greater and greater achievements for those who choose to meet the challenge. I think the future of human space exploration is never ending. I, I don't see that people will ever stop wanting to reach out and understand more about the universe uh, to explore, um, to look out beyond us and try to get as big a picture as possible. I think that we need to expand outwards into our uh, universe so that we can get a better perspective on our own Earth. Um, how, what our role as humans who live on this earth really is and what our place in the universe is. And so I think that will never go away.